On Only. Carry On Only, dedicated to inspiring your next global adventure. And now, here's your host and personal guide, award-winning photographer, creative director, and travel expert, taking you around the world in style, Jill Pater. I'm your host, Kevin, along with Sam. Hello. How are you doing, Sam? You know, I'm doing great. Just doing hanging in there? Yeah, how You're are you? Ready to do a little traveling? I am so ready. Awesome, awesome. Uh, traveling Style is sponsored by CalPAC. We are here today with our travel uh, expert, Jill Pater. Hello, Jill. How are you? I'm doing well, thanks. Awesome. So if I have it correct here, you're going to be taking us to London today. I am. What am Foggy I... London Town. <laughs> I knew you were going to do that. I was waiting. <laughs> I had to do it. Foggy London Town. <laughs> Probably my favorite city in the world. I'm no very kidding. excited. Yes. Yeah, I feel like you've been to a ton of cities. I this have. This is your favorite. This is one of my favorites. Oh, yeah. Uh, one of my favorites. You know? Yeah. Okay, good. Awesome. So, London and Cape Town, I, I would say. Okay, let's yeah. let's dive into it. Why is it one of your favorite cities? I think because it's so diverse. You never get bored in love, London. I lived there for five years, and every day I would walk down the same street to to go to school or get transportation to where I was working. And every day you notice a new shop or a new art gallery or museum or something opening up. I mean, it's just, it's such a dynamic city. There's so much to do. And it has such a diverse population living there. When you say, when you mention like there's always a new place, new, you know, new shop opening up, does that mean that it's like gentrified or you mean it's just like little you know, boutiques here and there. Yeah. I'm just, trying to imagine. Yeah. I mean, it is a very gentrified city by mm -hmm. all means, but just l new things kind of changing and happening. Okay. Um, certainly, like their culinary scene has grown leaps and bounds over the last decade. And so always like great new restaurants to try and just the cross section of people. London is kind of the center of the world. It's like the hub for European travel. Um, and it's just, it brings, I feel like the best of all worlds. That's wonderful. Do, do you find that I mean is there is it easier at all to be in London because you know everyone speaks English and it's I mean it's kind of like you know the states definitely like as uh, compared to say Paris yeah. which is also a great city uh, similar weather <laughs> um, yeah, definitely easier because it is English speaking right. um, and you know London's just bigger you have you kind of have more going on there so mm -hmm. I think it's it, it gets more tourism, I would say, than Paris does. You just have a bigger cross-section of people. So you lived there for five years, mm -hmm. correct? Um, was that for work, for personal, for fun? Yes. I went to graduate school there and then worked and, and stayed on for a few years um, before moving back to the States. And I still go back every once in a while. I teach. I, I guess lecture there uh, and teach workshops in photography. So I guess is is. London, one of your favorite cities just because you're so familiar with it, or is it great for work, for shooting, for, you know, architecture, for culinary? I would say it's, it's it has always been, I think, from my first time ever visiting London. I think for me, it just, it's such an appeal to the senses. It has some of the best art galleries in the world. It has great theater, an amazing music scene. Um and it's just I love walking the city, going to new restaurants. I have lots of friends that live there. So it's mm -hmm. just for me, it's it's a bit it's it's hard to even separate it anymore. And I also do love teaching yeah. my guest lecture and teach there too. I mean, before you uh went to graduate school there, had you visited visited London before? I had. I okay. in, yeah, I interned there in college and then you know And then you're like, I'm going back, back yeah, yeah. for a yeah. reason. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 really wonderful. You became a little a local basically within the five years, and then you go back and you discover something new every time you go. Yes, and every time it you know it changes so much. So, you know your local knowledge is good for like the main things, but it's it's almost a new city every time. Yeah. Do you go to different cities? Like, do you find is it difficult to get around London? I know. I feel like people talk about the transportation there. There's trains and, you know, is it a challenge at all getting around the city? You know, UK has like some of the best public transportation yeah. in the world, particularly London. Like the tube, their metro is so comprehensive. It gets you to every part of the city. They have a great bus system that's basically 24 hours a day. It's yeah, very when I easy. I think of London, I think of buses for sure. Yeah. yeah. The double decker buses. Yes. yes I don't yeah. Know. Taxis, Ubers, you know, you yeah. have every. Possible form. It sounds like LA needs to take a note from on public transportation from, right, from for London. sure, oh for gosh. sure. And then it's easy to take trains and yeah. uh, not only trains throughout the country, but also it's a huge hub for like cheap air flights throughout Europe. Um, throughout the year, would you say, or what's the best time of the year to go? Um, really, anytime you know, London doesn't get 
crazy cold. Okay. I mean, there's usually like one or two weeks out of the year where like for most people, it's not super comfortable, but it never gets like Midwestern cold. I'm from Wisconsin, right. so it never gets that cold. Um, but I would say, you know, tourist season, I would I would avoid like, you know, summer and sp- spring, summer and fall, I think are, are probably the best times. But even like November, like a pre-holiday shopping trip there. I love that time of year there. I would say there's really not a bad time of year. Right. I think that, that that's a good point, though. So London can be known as being relatively kind of expensive. Mm-hmm. Is there a way to navigate the city and to travel there, you know, on a budget or, you know, if you don't have... Uh, you know, a million dollar salary. <laughs> yes. A million dollars. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's a, a common concern with London. And it, it definitely is. It, it definitely can be a very expensive city. But the great thing about it is, one, the public transportation is so comprehensive that you don't need to take taxis or Ubers to, to most places. Um, also, the international airfare there is usually, it's, first of all, a lot of direct flights from most major U.S. cities. And they're very reasonable uh, throughout the year, the hardest, the, I'd say, the biggest challenge in London is is going to be your hotel, like finding a hotel or bed and breakfast or Airbnb that question. you want to stay at. And I think, again, if you're not traveling in like the height of height season, you can find you can find great things. And with public transportation being so accessible, you can stay with not you know right in the stack of the center and still get there relatively reasonably. But I would say the hotel is like just the biggest challenge, finding a place that you like within the budget. But there are lots of um, kind of bed and breakfast there, a lot of cute places. And you're not really going to be in your hotel that often. You're, you're going to be, be out, out and about, about the yeah. whole time. I feel like you need to publish a book on just how to travel on a budget. <laughs> yes. Like just, yeah. Because you know all these Especially great in hacks. London, yeah. because I do imagine that it is relatively expensive too, like Europe in general. But um, for London, I'm trying to figure out, is there, are you strategic about your, you know, menu for the day, transportation, just like things that you do on a day-by-day basis, plus you were a student for some time there. Mm -hmm. How did you budget? Well, I have to say, as a student versus now, it's a very different city. When you come back (laughs) with a little bit more money, it's it's much more enjoyable. Like most things in life, it's better with money. But um, there are a lot of, the thing is, is there are a lot of free museums. There's tons of free things to do in London Mm -hmm. and in museums with complimentary entrance and um, you, you you could never do everything there is to do, even all the main tourist sites. So I think just, you know, coming together with a list of all the things that you want to do and, and, and figuring out budget that way is a good way to go. In terms of food options, there are great, um, you know, London is known for its curry, its Indian food. And so there are great kind of fish and chip options, like those cheaper meals, mm-hmm. as well as obviously going back to Michelin star restaurants. So you, you have a, <laughs> there is a range there. Um, and, you know, it's always hard in the city because you, you're attracted to different things. I think the other thing there are the arts. They have amazing, you know, opera, ballet, theater. Yes. Um, that's well known for. So the challenge isn't that any of these individual things are so ex- expensive. It's that when you pack them into one day, <laughs> you know, it kind of adds up because you, you want to do and see everything. But it, it is very – it can be very budget-friendly if you just – you plan around it. If you get the hotel, you get a good deal on the flight, and then um, – you know, public transportation will get you around to most places. It's it's usually just the extras that end up right. being cost. But you got to have some extras. Yeah, of course. You, have to, you yes. need the little sprinkle right. in the extras. Right. Yeah. So for somebody visiting for their very first time, what are the top three things they have to do? That's a tough one because I think it really depends on your interests. Mm-hmm. Like for me, art is, you know, number one. I right. love the Tate Modern. I love um, – the National Galleries there are amazing. Mm-hmm. Buckingham Palace, if it's open while you're there, oh, yeah. is, is a big one. But it really – it kind of depends on your different tastes. Mm-hmm. If you're into the music scene, there's like thousands of options oh, for that. Oh, my gosh, yeah. If you like to shop and go to boutiques, you have that as an option. It has beautiful parks. Um it, it, it's just hard. The London Eye, you know, some people like the more touristy things like London Eye, a uh, tour of Parliament, if you can get one, is amazing. Um, the stunning architecture, the history. You just have so much there that you do. That is one recommendation I have when traveling there. It's like you do kind of have to pick and choose things because you will burn out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I've had friends come and visit and they, you you will burn out if you try to do it all. Jam you kind of have everything. to pick. Yeah, you, you have just to have to go your... there for grad school and then teach. You there. have to stay there. Yeah. But it's funny because <laughs> even even living there, you can't you can't do it all. Like yeah. I I would go to different events and museums and gallery openings and shows and things, and you can never do it all. And that's what makes it 
um, such a tantalizing city to be in. Yeah. And it's always so fun to go back. I think the, the real question is, since you lived there for an extended period of time, is it Soccer or football? Football. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that was, we're the, only, we're yeah, the only ones right. that called soccer. <laughs> I was literally waiting for you to, for the same question, like, oh, what, what's going to be the question? <laughs> yeah. It made me forget my question. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so foot, football is the thing. Football is the way to go. While you were saying that, it reminded me how, like, you could be uh, a native or a local in your own city and still be uh, a tourist in it. And so you're constantly learning new things. Like, I... You know, being in Los Angeles, there's so many places that you don't go to all the time. Like I have a friend who's always lived here and has never been to the Getty Villa. Um, so how are you on discovering new things within London, whether it was during the span of the five years or when you come back? Like what brings you to new adventures when you visit? I think I'm always like I always have an eye on what's going on and, you know, reading like latest openings and watching the shows. And I know what a treat it is to be there. So when I go back, I know it's like I know I'm there for a limited amount of time and make the most of it. And I usually, the last couple of times, I rent a flat from a friend who lives next to the Barbican Center, which is a performing arts center. So I would literally just go there. And I, there wasn't a TV in the flat or Wi-Fi. So yeah. I literally just go there. And I go to that center every night. And they have what they call return tickets, which are people that don't show oh, up to yeah. the show. And so, so you get cheaper. like discount tickets. Okay. Right. And so that would just be my entertainment would be like, you know, uh, uh, theater, you know, grand theater performance or music or, you know, whatever was going on. So I just, I think the best you can do is make the most of the time that you have. I love going to the Royal Ballet when I'm there, um, checking out new restaurants. And I have friends that live there and, you know, we kind of strategize and, you know, figure out yeah. what we're going to do. You and, call them up and you're like, I'm coming to I'm London. Coming, I'm coming to London, yeah. No, they know me well. They all tease me because every weekend I'm there, you know, we're just so used to, like, in the U.S., our distances are so great, and there everything is so close. So, like, yeah. I called my friend, like, I'm like, we're going to Cyprus for the weekend, and all these flights are, like, dirt cheap, you know, go to Provence for the weekend, we're going here for the weekend. and From and, there. Yeah, and, every, you know, to people who live there, that's crazy. They would yeah. never spend that lots of time, but I'm like, we have to do it just because we can. Because so you can. Going. Yeah. How, how, yeah. Yeah. So with all the with all the places that you do travel to, mm -hmm. right, is London one of the places that I mean I know you said it's one of your favorite cities, right? But do you recommend it? Is it one that you travel back to or would travel back to frequently for work, for always just pleasure? Um, you know, it's it sounds like a great and very enjoyable city, but when you go, is there usually, uh, you know, more of a reason for, for work purposes? There usually is. There's yeah. usually a, a work impetus. It, it, it's usually around, around, around teaching or consulting at the University of the Arts in London. I consult on the photography program there. Um, so that's usually the impetus. But then, you know, other times I'll be in Europe, I'll fly through there to visit friends she and just, say hello. She just stops yeah. by. I was going to say, yeah. it sounds like everywhere you travel to, like, it just happens to be a really awesome city. <laughs> happens, right? yeah. <laughs> just happens. How coincidental. Have happens yeah. But I highly recommend London. You know, I think in the scheme of things, um, London gets underrated to, say, Paris or, you know, parts of Italy. But I think it's just uh, an amazing city that people really love. It's easy for travelers, obviously, from the U.S. because it's English-speaking. Mm -hmm. And there's just so many different things to do that it appeals to people with all different kinds of varied interests. When you travel to to all these different cities, and you know, especially one that is as, as significant as London, do you pull a lot of inspiration from these cities, you know, for future work or just for your you know, daily life? Absolutely, and, and particularly with London, I mean, the the art scene there is off the charts. Oh. So going to different gallery shows and even teaching there because the my, the student body there is so international. So you meet different people. You, there's so many different creative influences, um, and it's just such a hub of I would say international humanity, you know, mm -hmm. that it, it's very influential, I would say. And it's just a different, you know, anytime you get out of particularly cities like L.A., you get such a different perspective on things, which right. I think is always important, too. This really that, you know, that really makes me really excited because I felt the same way as far as I travel or I studied abroad but we were in the Netherlands and it totally made me look at design and art in a totally different way other than seeing it in textbooks or online. So I could imagine that you're so constantly soaking up something super new and then you come back to Los Angeles and it's just like this back and forth of inspiration being, you know, thrown in and then pulled out. So how is it when you guess lecture for your students, do you, do you think that they feel like you bring – an L.A., you know, <laughs> U.S. vibe when you teach or are you sticking to like a certain curriculum? 
I'm sure I do because a lot of um, my teaching there is is based on, you know, me being a working photographer. So they want input from somebody who's working and, and doing their job and, you and know, traveling around the world. Too, yeah. Right. And, and how you kind of how, how you manage this creative life, right, of of, of doing all these different things and yet still making money and, and yeah. having a successful business. So I think there's definitely a very American element to that because we live in a very entrepreneurial culture where things, there's just a level of possibility here that I don't think translates as much in Europe. You know, it's, it's, a, it's less entrepreneurial in that way. And so I think it's tougher actually for artists there and so, for some extent being on their own and being freelance. Um, so I'm sure that American side comes through, but I think I have, you know, one of the nice things about traveling and working all over the world is you do gain a global perspective on things and that, that brings into it too. And how to, how to be a global citizen, how to, how to work and live kind of globally and, and, and take the best of all worlds and, you know, use those elements to refine you and what you do. Yeah. After uh, after an extended stay in London, have you ever come back to the States with an accent like Madonna? <laughs> Just like on accident. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> after the five years I spent there, you know, you do start to change. When I first went there for graduate school, I felt like such an American because our, you know, our sentence structure is different. Words that we say like awesome, awesome, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, are not used. And, and so you do start to form your sentences a little differently so people sure. understand you. So I did have a little bit of that twang, but it went away, you know, within a, a month after the first time. But now on my, I, on my trips now, no. No, I is don't it, do Is that. there anything that, you know, still surprises you about London? Because you have been there so frequently, but is there anything that either maybe you look forward to always going back to or, you know, surprises you? I think how different it is. I mean, the one thing about London is it's, because it's constantly changing, it never, it always feels like home, but it's never quite home. And so that, the juxtaposition of those two things, I think going back always kind of surprises me how different it is, how it just doesn't, you know, it refuses to stay kind of the same. And it has become, you know, when I first went back to teach, I hadn't been there for 10 years. So there was a there was a span of time that I hadn't been there. And so the biggest shock then was the change in the, the culinary scene, because when I was there as a student, it still was, you know, London had, you know, notorious kind of British food was not well rated among, certainly among its European counterparts. And now London is probably one of the top food cities, if not the top food city in Europe. And so that has expanded their gastropub scene, um, gourmet British food, which, you know, were not words that you would use like 12 years ago. Um, so that, I think, has been a very positive change. But also the city itself has become more international. People now say it's hard to find a Brit in London, <laughs> you know, <laughs> hard to find an English person in London. Right. Um, so those are, I, I would say, the biggest changes. That's so exciting. I just wanted to go back real quick um, to something about students. What would you, what kind of advice, if you had a piece of advice to any young person that is looking to do what you do, like, uh, you know, photograph but travel around the world like f on a freelance basis like what's the what's the leap of faith they have to take I think it's a big one with you know as with anything um, I think it's just finding you know finding your passion and finding what works for you and just starting you know putting one foot in front of the other and, and starting to do it um, to the extent that you can and finding ways I think the biggest thing usually for students revolves around budget but in life, you either tend to have time or money, but rarely both at the same time. <laughs> so taking advantage of, if, in the case of a student, if you have time to do it and even, you know, I, I know students that crowdfund their trips and oh, yeah. <laughs> crowdfund even if it's just your parents. Smart. Even I if it's, crowdfund you, a, a home? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Real quick. Yeah. Sorry. Especially in London, that right. would be yeah. definitely crowdfunding for a home there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, for students, it's it's it, it's understanding that, like in the long term scheme, if that's what you want to do, then that one will take some investment. And if you have time, that's half of the equation. So looking for ways to budget and make it happen, and and certainly I think you know taking a year off to travel, or you know even if it's a couple months off to do you know the the full European tour, it, it it's definitely worth its weight in gold. I think it's a very formative experience, and yeah. and it's a form of education. You know, travel isn't just for fun. It's, mm -hmm. you know, you think of how much you pay to go to university, you know, mm -hmm. especially now and live. You know, travel, you learn just as much. And it's frankly less expensive than, than, than college. So, right. Exactly. So that's a justification you should use for your parents or anyone else funding your trip. Right. You should add it into your budget. Yes. Well. Yes, Sam, do you know what time it is? I think so. <laughs> you know what time it is? It's time for Jill's Packing <laughs> Hacks. hacks. <laughs> um, and in this case, uh, 
she's going to talk to us about the art of layering. Yes. So So layering in travel is very important, and and this will help you save a lot of room, especially if you're traveling carry-on only, but in your luggage. So typically on the plane, you know, planes can be unusually cold. And so I always recommend, you know, working in layers. And that way you can kind of swap out your bottom layers every day, of course, and then your top layers, you know, they're not going to get dirty or need to be, you Mm -hmm. know, laundered as frequently. And certainly for the plane, like I like lots of layers. I'm always freezing on planes. So I usually bring like a wool wrap and then, you know, a jacket over that. And sometimes just having those nice outerwear pieces helps you feel dressy as a traveler, even though you might be kind of wearing the same thing every day. You don't feel <laughs> dirty doing it because right. you have you have things underneath. But I think it's a big part. And as you're wearing those layers, that means you don't have to pack them in your bag. Right. And so I think it just makes for an easier system of swapping things out. Smart. Awesome stuff. Yeah. Yes. Jill, thank you once again. Only. Thanks for listening to Carry On Only, dedicated to inspiring your next global adventure. Listen to Jill take you around the world in style, live every week right here or 24-7 on demand at StarWorldWideNetworks.com. Please remember to like, subscribe, and share. For immediate access to Jill's destination guides, blog, and show notes, please visit JillPater.com. And follow her on Instagram at JillPater.com.